to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. The Bible says in Acts chapter 20, verse number 28, Therefore take heed to yourselves and all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. We welcome you today to our study of the life and work of an elder. We hope that you'll get your Bible handy and stay tuned as we're going to look at this encouraging study together. Welcome to the Gospel of Christ program. My name is Ben Bailey, and we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. Today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. Those members of the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. If you've got a Bible question or there's something you'd like to study, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God together with you. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. You can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and all our Bible study material is free of charge and available to you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether on DVD or CD, we'd love to send that to you. You can fill out a media request form from our website, or you can call us toll-free at one 855 458-3905. On our website, we have a host of Bible study material, including transcripts, study question, question and answers, and a variety of study materials that would help you in your study of the Word of God. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about the salvation of souls. That's our main emphasis. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about hidden agendas. We just simply want to help men and women know the Word of God and to go to heaven. And so as we transition to our study today, we hope that you'll get your Bible out and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together. When we think about the life and work of an elder, one of the things that stands out as premier in his life is that an elder has got to, with love and compassion, watch out for and warn the people of God about anything that has the potential to jeopardize their souls. Now, where do we find this? Again, the principles we're looking at on the life and work of an elder and later that we'll look at on the life and work of a gospel preacher are coming from Paul's address to the elders at Ephesus in Acts 20, verse 17 following. We notice this principle specifically from Acts chapter 20, verse number 31. Notice what the Holy Spirit says. Therefore, watch... And remember, Paul says, that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. What is it that, that Paul is motivated by? by? By his love and compassion. The very fact that Paul is doing his warning and that is teaching people things that are going to jeopardize their soul with tears suggests that Paul has a great compassion and love for the people of God. Friend, we see that as the example of Jesus. God so loved the world, He what? He gave. John 3, 16. Elders of the Lord's church are to be motivated by love. They're not to lord it over the flock, but rather to do it in a loving and an exemplary way. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1-5. through 5. And so, out of a love for souls, out of a compassion for God's people, and for purity of the Lord's church, Elders are encouraged to warn the flock about anything that has the potential to jeopardize people's souls. Now, friend, that could include a whole long list of things. And we realize that that list in and of itself could take up the rest of our time today. But let's just mention some of those things that are especially important and pertinent in people's lives. We want to warn people about certain doctrines or teachings that may cause people to go astray. Doctrines like 
once saved, always saved. That clearly teaches that, you know, although we may sin and fall short from time to time, or you know, we can never so sin as to be lost. What kind of doctrine is that? The Bible clearly teaches that we can so sin as to be lost. Galatians 5, verses 4 through 6, the Apostle Paul said, You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by law, listen now, you have fallen from grace. We want people to know that God is a God of love, that God is ready to forgive. Psalm 86 and verse 5, But should we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. Romans chapter 6, verse number 1. We want to identify that in people's lives there are certain temptations that we absolutely must steer away from. Is the devil doing everything possible to steer us toward those temptations? You look at the lust of the flesh. You look at the lust of the eyes. You look at the pride or temptation of life as well. And Satan in our world today is doing everything possible to make that very alluring for each one of us. Alcohol, uh, drugs, immorality, gambling, all those things have such a, are given such an appeal to the eye. But is it really what it's made out to be? Friend, we can read the Bible and see that it is not. Those things that many people think of as alluring and pleasant end up being destructive and damning to our souls. And so elders want to warn people. They do it in love. They do it out of compassion. But they must be straightforward and bold in their warning others about those things which will jeopardize their souls. Now, as it relates to the life and work of an elder, we also mention that a part of the qualities of a good elder is that here's a man who's going to give himself fully to God and His work. Listen to Acts 20, verse 32. The Apostle Paul says to the elders in Ephesus, So now, brethren, I commend you to God. What does it mean to be commended to God? I'm putting you toward God. I'm, I'm putting God on the spotlight. I'm making sure that your focus and your emphasis stays on God. Friend, for elders to really be what God wants them to be and what the church needs them to be, we desperately need men who are fully committed to God and His work. Now, we say this with all kindness, but too many times, even elders, preachers and elders, they can let things get in the way. Hey, we, we all like to have fun and recreation, and there's nothing in and of itself wrong with that. But if those things begin to take priority, and that be, begins to be our main focus, the church has got to take a back seat to that. And that's not what God wants. Maybe, and friend, I understand we've all got to make a living. Don't get me wrong. If a man won't work, neither shall he eat. A man won't take care of his own. It's worse than an infidel. Yeah, you've got to work. You've got to take care of your family. But friend, we do that so that we can have a family and put God first. If an elder's job, listen carefully now. If an elder's job requires so much time, effort, and energy for him, that he can no longer do the work of an elder, he's not fit to be an elder. Now, don't say that in unkindness. We don't say that to be mean. But if he can't put the church first, the best thing for that man is to step back, get his priorities straight until he can. Because the Lord's work... I'm not saying you can't work and be an elder. But friend, the church needs to be our top priority. It needs to be the thing that we're focused on. Yeah, we may have to spend a lot of time with the job, may have to work, but we're doing all that so that we can support and work and function as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we want a man who's fully committed to the work of God and to the church. Now friend, let, let me say this as well. We mean this with all kindness. But an elder, to really be what God wants him to be, He's got to realize that the church cannot be swayed by what his family does or does not do. And here's what we mean by that. Sometimes I think people in decision in elderships and sometimes in the Lord's church are too often swayed by what a family member may or may not do or some kind of problem they've got. And sometimes then that begins to feed over into the church. We need men who will stay true to the teaching of Christ, who will stay true to the teaching of God and are not going to be swayed to change what they think or believe. They're fully committed to the Lord and His church. I understand an elder and his family go hand in hand. They ought to be faithful and there's no doubt about that. My friend, you can't let the family 
take precedence even over the church. Now, listen carefully. The two ought to go hand in hand. Family and working as an elder of the church ought to work beautifully together. They ought to encourage. They ought to help. They ought to work together with one another. And we all want to strive to make sure that is the way it is in the Lord's church and among the family of God's people. Now, let's talk about another quality relative to the life and work of an elder. In the Lord's church, elders must be men. For the work to be what God wants it to be, elders must be men of the book. Part of the life and work of an elder is that they must give themselves fully to the Word of God. Listen again to Acts 20, verse 32. So now, brethren, Paul says, I commend you to God, there's your focus on God, and to His Word, and to the Word of His grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Friend, for the church to be strong, for it to grow, for it to prosper, for it to put aside the savage wolves in the era of this day and age, we need elders in the Lord's church who stand firmly behind the Word of God, who recognize the Bible. This book is our authority. All authority, Jesus said, has been given to me in heaven and on earth. We need elders who realize that a thus saith the Lord is what we stand behind and that we must never try to hide the Word of God but let it reign freely in our lives. You see, on the judgment day, the world's going to be judged by this book. Jesus said in John 12, 48, He who rejects me does not receive my word. He's got that which judges him. Word that I've spoken in the last day will judge him. We want men of the book who realize this is the inspired Word of God. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for, proof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. This book is God's Word. If any man speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. 1 Peter 4.11 And so we want them to realize the authority of it. We want them to, to recognize it's from God. And we want men in the Lord's church who are good students of the Scripture. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 Be ready always to give an answer. 1 Peter 3, verse number 15. And friend, as we think about the work of an elder and how that's uniquely tied to the teaching and the growth of the congregation, we need elders, listen carefully, we need elders who will insist in our, in our pulpits, in our Bible classes, in every program we've got that the Word of God is taught. If any man speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. 1 Peter 4.11 Preach the Word. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 2. And if someone's not willing to do that, then friend, it's the responsibility of the elders to take care of that, to remove that from the congregation, and to make sure that somebody who's going to teach and preach the Bible is put in the position where that is going to take place. Let me, let me share with you another passage that speaks directly to our need to have men and women, or men in the eldership, not women, but men in the eldership, who will uh, teach exactly what God wants them to and who are willing to stand up with the Word of God and defend the faith. Listen to Titus chapter 1, beginning in verse number 9. The Bible says, "...of the qualification of elders, holding fast the faithful Word as He has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and convict those who contradict. For there are many insubordinate, both idle talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole households, teaching things they ought not to, for the sake of dishonest gain. Friend, let's make sure when elders are about to be put in, when the qualifications are examined, when the congregation looks to put men in, that we're putting in men who stand four square behind the Word of God and stand firmly on its teaching. Now, let's talk for just a moment about another part of the life and work of an elder, and it's this. Elders must encourage and do their best to strengthen those who are maybe weak in the faith or babes in Christ. Now, where does that come from? Listen to Acts chapter 20, 
verse number 35. Here's what Paul said to the elders in Ephesus. He says, I've shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak. There were some who were weaker in the faith. Maybe even some who Paul had to write about in the, God, in the letter of 2 Corinthians who weren't even sure if Paul could even take a paycheck. And if he had to, that's why he said at times, you know, he didn't want to be a burden to the church. I, I've done like this. I've labored like this to maybe even support the weak. There were some who were weak in the faith. Some who were weak spiritually. And Paul says of the elders, you've got to do your part to encourage and strengthen those who are babes in Christ. Part of the work of an elder is to be able to work with people at every level. From those who are mature in Christ, those who have excelled in a study of the Bible, to those who are maybe right in the middle, to those who are all the way down at the bottom. A a babe in Christ. Someone who's just maybe obeyed the gospel and he knows what he needs to know to be saved and become a Christian, but he doesn't know a whole lot else. Hey, he's going to have problems, just like any other baby. He's going to have problems. He's going to make mistakes. He's going to mess up. He's going to have to be taught and learn. But an elder's got to be able to work with a person like that, not run them off, not push them away, not necessarily be, you know, we've got to work with them in kindness and patience. and, And that doesn't mean that we can't correct and teach. But you've got to be able to encourage and strengthen people who are weak in the faith to bring them up where they need to be. Think about it like this. Would you talk to a maybe an a, a older man or woman in the same way and tone that you would a baby? Well, of course not. You'd get down on that young person's level. You'd work with them on their level. You'd try to teach them. You'd try to encourage them. And then someone who's older and mature, you can work with them in a different way. That's the way elders need to be in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Encourage and strengthen even those who are weak in the faith. Now friend, here's an awesome part of being an elder. And this is something that is so important. As we think about for just a few moments the life and work of an elder and what that requires, let's realize that part of being an elder is to they've got to realize the blessing of being a person who's willing to give of themselves for others. Now, we find that in Paul's words in Acts chapter 20, verse number 35. Paul says this, he says, I've shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak and why do all that? Why why do you got to give it yourself? Why support the weak? And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. What's the context of those words? I understand there could be a broad application for that, but what's the immediate context under which Paul reminds them of the words of Jesus? It's the work of an elder, especially working with people who are weak and who take a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of patience to strengthen. Hey, if you're going to work with somebody who's weaker in the faith, who's a babe in Christ, is that going to take, are you going to have to give a lot of time? Are you going to have to give a lot of attention? Are you going to have to give a lot of effort? Are you going to have to be a giving person? Absolutely. Why why do all that? Well, do you remember the words of the Lord Jesus where He said, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive? Friend, the benefit that comes from watching somebody grow as a babe in Christ watching them mature, watching them maybe marry a a good Christian man or woman, watching them continue to develop, bring good Christian family into the world, watching them ultimately maybe even grow one day to whether a gospel preacher or an elder in the Lord's church and watching them live faithful until their very last breath. What greater reward could you have than that? That's why Jesus said, or that's why Paul references the words of Jesus it's more blessed to give than it is receive. Giving of yourself and watching that progression happen, probably one of the greatest things in all the world. And friend, that reminds us of this principle again. For an elder, you've got to realize the blessing of being a giving person. You can't be the type of person that's, and I hope you'll understand the way we're saying this, but you can't be the type of person that it's all me, 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 and I, 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 and what I want. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's times for self. But you're going to have to be more of a giving person than you are a receiving person. You're going to have to be one who's more willing to work than he is to be worked on. More willing to give than he is to be given to. More willing to put out than he puts in. And that's going to require a lot of effort. Doesn't mean you have to, doesn't mean you have to neglect yourself. Doesn't mean you have to neglect your family. 
but it does mean you've got to balance things, you've got to get your priorities straight, and you've got to work diligently with the people of God as a truly giving person. Now, let me mention another quality, an aspect of an elder that is especially mentioned in Acts chapter 20, verse number 36. Part of the life and work of an elder means that you really need to be a man of prayer. Listen to Acts chapter 20, verse 36. Here's Paul. Here's what Paul does. And this is such a, a really a touching scene. Paul realizes that he's probably never going to see these elders again. I don't know for sure, but he kind of has that in mind. And so here's what he does. When he had said these things, the Bible says he knelt down and prayed with them all. And they began to even weep freely upon Paul and the things that are about to happen. But look at Paul's encouragement to these elders. He knelt down and prayed with them all. What do we need out of elders in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ? We need men who are men of prayer. Friend, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about great men of the Bible. And I want you to think about a constant quality that each one of those men possess. For example, I want you to think about Daniel. You know, we hear about Daniel, we talk about his life, we talk about, you know, Daniel being thrown in the lion's den and all that Daniel suffered and faced. What made Daniel such a great man of God? Daniel was a man of prayer. He knelt down three times daily, as was his custom from early days, even when he was told by the people of that day, if you pray to your God, you're going to go to the lion's den. Daniel said, there's the window. That's the direction of my Jerusalem. I'm praying toward my God. And he did that. He wasn't afraid to. You watch other people like Ezra and like Nehemiah, and you read those books. Great men of God working during difficult times. Anything would happen. And Ezra and Nehemiah, they were down on their knees praying to God. And then, of course, the chief shepherd for every elder to follow, Jesus Christ. Great man of prayer. You look in Mark chapter 1, verse 35. In the morning, a great while before daylight, Jesus departed, went to a solitary place, they prayed. At the time of miracles, at the time of feeding the 5,000, at times of great conflict, at times when he realized he just needed God's help more than he could even begin to imagine probably, Jesus prayed. Think about greatest conflict of all maybe in the garden, Matthew 26. Jesus struggling. You know, we read in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 that he can relate to us because He became flesh and blood as well and suffered the things we suffered. Hey, He suffered. He faced those things. And in the garden, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from Me. Not My will, but Thine be done. You talk about a great example of prayer. Jesus is that pattern of prayer. And so when we think about elders in the Lord's church and the great, great work that they are to do, they need to be men of prayer. We want people who will pray for the growth of the Lord's church. Jesus said in Matthew 28, verse 18, Go into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. We want to hear elders who are willing to pray that evangelism will be successful, that we'll find good ways and means to do that, and who are really concerned about the salvation of the lost. We want to hear men who pray when they pray for the Lord's church, elders who pray for the safety and concern of the local congregation. You know, to, to hear them pray for you and for me, to realize they're thinking about our souls, you know, that in and of itself is a motivating factor to, that ought to encourage each one of us to strive to live and to do right and to know what God wants us to know and to do. And so we think about these qualities and we think about the awesome work of an elder in the Lord's church. And friend, as I think about this, I'm reminded again of the words of Hebrews 13, 17, except it's the last part of that that I really think about in summation of all the life and work of an elder. I want you to listen to these words in Hebrews 13, and, and I want you to ask yourself, if you are a member of the Lord's church and the local congregation, are you doing your part to make this happen? Listen to Hebrews 13, 17 again. Obey those who rule over you, and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give an account. Now listen to this. Am I doing my part to make this happen? Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. As a member of the Lord's church in the body of Christ, 
Am I letting the elders do the work they need to do with joy? Now, friend, listen very carefully. We mean this as much kindness as we can muster. But there are people in the body of Christ who are constantly complaining, who are constantly down on the elders, who are constantly a discouragement to the eldership in the local congregation. Don't let that be you. Friend, I understand you may not, in expedient matters, okay, not talking about in doctrine, but in expedient matters, the decision may not have been made the way you thought it ought to be. Friend, that's not your decision to make. Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey those who rule over you. I'm not talking about false doctrine and teaching. I'm talking about matters of expediency, the functioning of God's Word. It may not be exactly like I would like for it to be on every decision, but you know what? I'm glad there are good elders in the Lord's church. I'm glad they're putting our souls first. I'm glad they're striving to do evangelism. And friend, let's do our part to make their work a joy and make it profitable for to make it not. It's not profitable to me. If I'm constantly complaining and murmuring and can't be satisfied, friend, that work of the Lord's church is not going to be what God wants it to be. A powerful example here. Do you remember... During the times of Moses leading the people out of the land of Canaan, you know, Moses begins to lead them and they've gone through, they've seen all the miracles. They've gone through the Red Sea. They're, they're getting fed from heaven every night, manna. God's taking care of them. And what do the people begin to do? The people following the great leader Moses. They began to complain and they began to murmur and they began to say, what'd you do? Bring us out here to kill us? Oh, that we're back by the flesh pots in Egypt. You know what happened because of that? That generation didn't see the promised land. Isn't there a great lesson to be taught in that? God despises murmuring and complaining among His people. And so the encouragement for elders is do the work of God faithfully. The encouragement for the members of the local congregation is help them to do that with joy and let's each strive. To be the type of Christian we ought to be. Friend, we want the church to prosper. We want the gospel to be spread. We want souls to be saved. Let's do our part to be the kind of people God wants us to be. And let's encourage the members and the elders in the local congregation to do the work of God with great joy. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.